CBP reporting nearly 2 million illegal crossings in 2021. Those were individuals that were caught by Border Patrol agents here. What does this tell you about the state of our national security? Well, it's good to see you both. And quite frankly, what it tells me is that this administration has no interest in border security and by extension, national security, which is their number one duty. When I talk to Border Patrol agents, they tell me that they're not getting the support that they need. They're telling me that they are seeing more and more gotaways because they're being pulled off the line to process and babysit. Uh, when you look at Secretary Mayorkas, who has failed miserably every step of the way, we are really now at a place where the, the United States government is completing the trafficking cycle on behalf of the cartels. Secretary Mayorkas has no interest in enforcing the laws on the books. He has no interest in giving support to agents. He has become a mouthpiece for this administration, which, as I have said many times before, we don't have a commander in chief. We have a trafficker in chief. And so, yes, we have a crisis at the border. We are seeing the numbers of, of apprehensions going up steadily every single month, the number of gotaways that are going up steadily over the, the course of time, and, of course, the drugs that are pouring across our border. Sure. And this has led to every town in America being a border town. Well, you mentioned the drugs, and we started uh, with the stats here. Again, the leading cause of death for 18 to 45-year-olds. The Holt Fentanyl Act um, comes from this data that CBP reported seizing more than 11,000 pounds of fentanyl in 2021. It's a 42% increase from 2020. Uh, 37,000 fentanyl overdoses in 2020, according to the CDC here. Uh, this sounds like a crisis. Yeah, absolutely. This is what many are referring to as the third wave of the American opioid crisis. And make no mistake, there is a clear line that we can trace back to China, which is responsible for the raw materials, then going to Mexico, and then Mexico then produces the, the fentanyl, packages it, and mules carry it across, smuggle it across, and it lands in our backyard. Just yesterday, I was on the House floor uh, working to make sure that we could procedurally put a bill on place by one of my colleagues called the Halt Fentanyl Act, and Democrats voted it down. Yet, as we have seen, the number one cause of death for Americans between the ages of 18 and 45, it's fentanyl. It's not COVID, it's not climate change, it is fentanyl. Every single family in America knows someone or has been directly impacted by the vice mm. grip that the narcotics in our communities are having uh, on, on us. And sure. it's a direct tie back to what's happening at the border. I actually presented uh, evidence, a brick of fentanyl that one of my local sheriffs, Sheriff Billy Woods, had uh, confiscated. And it was enough fentanyl. It was 986 grams. It was enough to kill 500,000 people. Mm -hmm. When we took our sheriffs to the border, one of the HSI agents pointed to that and said, hey, look, that's a border cartel stamp on that brick of fentanyl. We know that these drugs are pouring into our communities. We know that this is a crisis. And yet you have a man in the White House who doesn't care, pretends not to notice, and then his chief border czar is completely MIA. Sure. It's a crisis of epic proportions. Well, the president has been weighing in on the developing situations at the Ukraine-Russia border. Yesterday, we learned uh, that the U.S. will be deploying 3,000 troops to Eastern Europe, to the region, not to Ukraine directly. Um, again, as we started our conversation here, Republican Congressman Jim Jordan says that President Biden's handling of the border is an impeachable offense. As we know, Republicans do not have the majority at this time, so, so it wouldn't happen. They don't have the votes. Uh, but do you support uh, Rep. Jordan's ideas that, that President Biden should be impeached over his handling of our southern border? Well, and, you know, you brought up something very important, the fact that Biden is now looking to send additional troops to the Ukrainian border, yet has completely disregarded the need for additional personnel at our southwest border. So we, through the, the National Defense Authorization, actually forced this administration to call it a crisis. They've disregarded that. We have authorized additional troops to be sent to the border because more than 60 percent of our Border Patrol agents are being pulled off the line to babysit and to process. It is absolutely unconscionable. I think you're going to see in the 118th Congress an entirely new attitude in terms of holding this administration accountable. And I don't know about you, but I am definitely looking forward to starting with Secretary Mayorkas. He is somebody who needs to go immediately. 
And I know that Americans across this country are going to be very excited to see this Republican Congress hold every single member of this administration accountable. We followed the reports of Border Patrol agents turning their back on Mayorkas during a recent trip to the border. So clearly uh, frustration there. Congresswoman Kat Kamek joining us on the program. Congresswoman, thank you so much. We appreciate the conversation. Thank you so much.